Okay, great stuff. So question 53 um, feeds in from um, <clears throat> 47 and 48 um, Washington. So you need to refer to that. Um, and they just want us to pick up the figures from there and adapt um, this to the cash flow forecast. Now, um, I've always said that I think one of the, I'll show you, I'll, I will work you through the, the answers they give. But one of the beautiful ways I think of dealing with um, the cash flow forecast in terms of cash is really just applying, if you like, the double entry principle here to the trade receivables and to the revenue account. And this is for sales and the same thing for materials, if you like. And I'll just do their sort of trade payables. And that's if you like purchases, because it is fundamentally that relationship. You see here, it says here that we see at the beginning of the story, it says the sales receivable balance is expected to decrease by 162 over the year. So if you agree that the opening balance for it could have been anything, they could be any two numbers with a difference of 162. But let's take the simplest case scenario where we have nothing. And then we have a carry down figure of 162. That's what it. sorry, forgive me. It says it'll decrease. So it's 162 at the beginning. And then it's nothing at the end. It decreases. It goes from 162 to zero to nothing. That's the principle. That's the double entry. Um, and, and so the question here is what happened? What was the, so I just, I'm just going to go back to Washington and Adams. If I go back to Washington and Adams here, and that's, that's the sales. You, you, you would have done this question before you arrive here. And it says the revenue on credit 486. So what's happened here, if I come back here is that I have here 486000. 486000. That's what that's the situation. So the question here is that oh I have I need a bank account if you like. That's a bank. The question here is if I'm going to close this these accounts off, well, the only figure that could be here must be, and then we can then rationally talk about this now. So 1612 plus 486 is um is six four. Sorry, is six two plus six is is six four eight zero 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 bank six four eight. So what happened here? At the beginning of the year, you're owed one hundred and sixty two thousand. You sell some more goods on credit for four eight six. You now receive six eight four. So for your debt receipts, your rece receivable balance to go down, it means that you're receiving money from someone who's owed you money here from the beginning of the year. And so the sales receipts will be for six hundred and forty eight thousand. Okay, now the materials payable, applying exactly the same principle, says it increases. So if I look at the trade payable, I start off here with a balance of zero, and then my carry down figure, therefore, is going to be 26,800. So I go back to the same place and I ask the question material purchases. So I purchased in that period um, goods worth 124,200, 124,200. So if I am buying goods, <clears throat> 124,200, 124,200, 124,200. So the question is that I'm, and I'm closing off, then it means I must have paid the difference, which is 124,200 minus 26,800, right? So that's 124,200 minus 26,000. 800 and that's 97,000 and I'll talk about it again 97,400 going out of the bank 97,400 so that's 97,000 97,400 now what does this mean it says that this has increased by 26,000 so you imagine you didn't owe anything at the beginning of the year you buy goods on credit worth 124 now you're owing 26,800 it means you must have paid less than what you actually owed you didn't pay the full amount that's why your receivables have increased in the year right so 97,400 sorry 90 yes 97,400 and of course naturally labor um, labor would just be what it is. You cannot store labor. So you paid 35200 and so there you are, 35000 35, That's what you would pay for your labor. The question does say that production overheads um, would be similar pretty much, but it includes a depreciation charge of $19,000. let us find out what that is. So our production overhead, um, if you like our production overhead, um, <clears throat> Where 
Yes, where are we? Here we are. So production overheads here, 170,020, but it includes 170020, 170020. We're told it includes this um, depreciation charge, which is not cash, because we're here, we're focused on cash, purely cash. So 170020 minus 19,000, which is 15, oh, sorry, 151. Zero two zero, and then my overheads relate to marketing, and let's see what that was. So my other overheads, of course, were to do with administration and marketing. Those two, and that's one hundred and five, one hundred and five thousand. So let's add all that together and see what we we have. So we have ninety seven thousand four hundred plus 35,200, plus 151,020, plus 105,000, which gives you plus 50,000 for the capital expenditure, and you have a total of 438,620. So you have an opening balance here. You have this coming in. So 29,650 plus 648,000, minus 438 620 gives you 239 zero, three, zero. cool great stuff so again what's important here um they, they do tell us that we're talking about what you're receiving you're buying raw materials remember you're making the product so you're buying the raw materials that's why that's what the material cost is to do with and that's really the the point there um and I think rationalizing why these changes are happening is important to understand that, uh, that a decrease in the receivable balance is you receiving money, right? And an increase in effect is you not paying as much as you should um, compared to what you have bought on credit. And But again, at this stage, we must be comfortable with double entry at this level of preparing um, trade receivable, revenue, you, this must be a handy tool available to you. So this this 53 is nice. It, it is literally repeated in 54. So please think of this as a template for you um, to be able to attempt 54. Brilliant.